while the SJWs always project, and this is pretty interesting uh, here because Endymion actually finished the game. And so he learned everything there is to learn about Dragon Age of the Veilguard. This is something that like those like gaming journos at IGN don't do. Uh, and uh, we'll get into uh, what IGN's doing because they they gave this game a nine out of ten initially, uh, and uh, and they're kind of like going, oh oh, we made a mistake <laughs> at this juncture as well. Uh, but every time they accuse you of anything of of hating people because of the color of their skin or their gender or what, this is what they do. This is what the woke agenda is a hundred percent, and it's open in Dragon Age the Veilguard. This is why the game's failing so badly, because gamers don't want to deal with this. Now, please hit the like and subscribe button. Join us, guys. We're covering everything in the culture, all these important things like this. And this is our Fandom Pulse substack as well. I'm going to have this in the description below. Please sign up. We just got John Trent, who was the editor-in-chief of Bounding Into Comics, the editor-in-chief of That Park Place. All the gaming news that you see YouTubers use all the time comes from this man. He's like the best journalist out there. And he's joined our outfit. Uh, him and I are writing together. We're going to transform the culture. This is going to be the spot where all the news breaks that you won't want to miss in the future. So sign up for this in the description below. And thank you guys for being there. We, we gained uh, double the paid members that we had before uh, yesterday uh, when John Trent started. This has been a great week. We really appreciate gamer support because you come in really, really hard. And uh, John F. Trent is the man. He is the one that is the best journalist out there. So pleased to have him with us. So let's talk about this. Dragon Age the Veilguard accused of hating white people openly. Yeah. Uh, and I don't doubt this whatsoever. Uh, so Dragon Age the Veilguard has been accused of this. Uh, and Demian made an accusation after completing the game and platinuming it. So he went through the entire game. Like I said... The people at IGN, at PC Gamer and all that, they play for like two, three hours max, and then they give it to their review and go, yeah, if if that. Sometimes they just get talking points from the companies themselves and don't even play the game and do a review. Uh, and so Vera Dark, uh, earlier this year, she did a great thing, a uh, wonderful YouTube channel over there too, uh, and said that you know these reviewers should really complete the game before they review it. And of course, the, uh, the the legacy media went ballistics. Oh, we don't have time to do that. Imagine doing that, you know, and, and uh, started attacking Vera Dark for saying, hey, you should actually play the games you review. Now, and Demian did it. Uh, kudos to him. I could, there's no freaking way I could sit through this game. Uh, uh, what a champ. <laughs> this is why he just hit 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. Congratulations, Endymion, on that. Um, so he talks about the whole game. He says, Everything in Veilguard is gay, trans, and hates white men exclusively. I've said this before, but it's unfortunately true. He says every single villain in the game is either a white man or a woman. They also make every faction led by either a woman, like in the case of the Grey Wardens and the Anti-Van Crows, which are led by a black elf woman and some other guy. So, by the way, there's no single faction in this game that's run by a single man, and it's especially not a single white man either. Uh, <laughs> the Shadow Dragons are led by a man and a trans man. The Veil Jumpers is led by an Asian and a black elf. The way, by the way, the Asian elf who leads the Veil Jumpers was previously in a relationship with Bellara, your companion. Oh yay! And the black elf whose name is Strife. If you don't romance Emmerich in the Necromancer, Strife and Emmerich end up being in a relationship as well. So some gay stuff. Uh, so the Veil Jumpers leaders are not only very diverse; they're both gay as well. The Morn Watch is led by a brown woman and a shadow ghost apparition thing. You can't make this stuff up. Every single one. Uh, they, you know, they always try to say that, like, they want the representation to look like the real world, but gosh, this is, uh, this is, uh, you know, not accurate whatsoever. And this is so crazy, but we knew this was going to happen with this game. We knew it. Um, and so, uh, he then reiterated, like I said, none of the factions are led by white men at all. Everything is either gay coded or female led. The gray wardens are led by heterosexual couple, but when you look at them, come on, it's ridiculous. It's a dwarf woman and a French accent elf guy who looks like he came out of the movie Ratatouille. These two do not scream gray wardens at all. They look like children. Like I said, this entire game is this, the entire game guys. Uh, and we knew this. He referenced another part of the game saying white men are always the bad guy. Like in Treviso, where the Antivan Crows reside, there is a traitor that's kind of hinted at early on in the story that's working with the Antum Quinari. Uh, you know, the place where the power of the Quinari uh, over the city, and it's obvious it's the governor. And surprise it is exactly. 
And of course, when you look at him, what is he? Of course, he's a white man. And of course, you kill him in combat during the Treviso final faction mission. He said, basically, everyone says, oh, that guy sucks. We're glad he's dead. This entire game hates white people openly. It's disgusting. It's obviously done on purpose. And then he reiterates and says, every faction is led by a trans or gay people. Every bad guy is a white man or woman. Even Neve Gallus' story, she fights a woman named Elio. See, I wonder what she is. Oh, right, she's also a white woman because of course she is. The problem is they go out of their way to ensure that everything is as diverse as possible while ensuring the villainous traits are only coded single-handedly to white men and white women exclusively. <clears throat> It's very evident the game here has an agenda. What's the likelihood that every person in power who's a good guy in this game is either gay, trans, or non-binary? And yet none of the villains you face are trans, gay, or non-binary. They're all straight and clearly white, he declared. Wow, this is pretty wild. And uh, the, oh my gosh, God bless him for playing this game again, because this is a lot. Uh, so he's been talking about this uh, for a long, long time. And uh, this is something pretty crazy happening in entertainment. We knew this was very, very bad. Absolutely a disaster for Dragon Age the Veil Guard. And of course, we talked about the sales disasters happening as well. Under 500,000 pre-orders, huge, huge returns on the pre-orders going on. Uh, that the, It's dropping off the Steam charge, which is very, very bad for an RPG. Usually, second week for an RPG is the biggest week that it has, and not this time. But it's also like being uh, walked back in the mainstream news. Grums was reporting on this this morning, exactly what was going on with the Veil Guard and with uh, IGN. So IGN, of course, posted their 9 out of 10 review. And you can see this morning, uh, it's awkwardly in conflict with itself, torn into pieces that reflect a sequel to a decade-old RPG and a fresh beginning with no ties to what came before. Uh, so this is pretty wild. And then this guy said, you guys covered a 9 out of 10, called it the best Dragon Age that there's ever been, gave it bonus points for its weird non-binary stuff. 99% of us reject and raved about its story, and now they're saying it's in conflict with itself. They admit now that the story's garbage, that they like did not put anything coherent together, that's a disaster, and every single time you do this kind of diversity thing, that's what happens. The stories cannot be in the forefront when you're focused on this kind of identity politics. It never works. So Grum says about this grifting is when you pander to an audience while not really believing what you say. IGN is grifting here by walking back their 9 out of 10 review for Dragon Age The Veil Guard. They never really reveal, believed it was a good game. They're espousing a narrative. When the sales were trash, they moved on to pretending it was never good in the first place. Leftists love to attack everyone with a source of income and has redefined the word grifting to mean anyone who earns a living. This is disingenuous on its face. And this is what's happening. Of course, all the commentators now, uh, that, that's the narrative that are going out there with a, uh, that, that it's, it's just grifting. Uh, talking about the news is grifting. Talking about the... Uh, uh, the the problems with with uh, uh, gaming media is quote grifting and uh, it's not it is telling the truth telling the truth is called journalism and that's what we're supposed to be doing and it's something that IGN no longer does anymore as we as we are quite aware so Goss uh, this is not good uh, for Dragon Age the Veil vale Guard uh, when you could see that it is clearly an anti white video game with most gamers being white you're going to see that of course this is not going to do very well for these people as it comes as it goes along they've already talked about in bioware how they're basically shutting this game down they're not going to be doing a big uh, 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 downloadable content patch like they always do for their games because they're moving on to mass effect this was said by one of their developers and with that that means that they know that this game's a failure that they're abandoning it right away and that is the whole thing right here but look at this. Uh, Sports Illustrated Lies says Dragon Age made more people start playing BG3 on Steam again. Yeah, BG, <laughs> that's right. Uh, Dragon Age The Veil Guard, uh, free download release. You can claim it now. And then here's the IGN article right here. Um, so they're still tiny, kind of shilling for it, but you can see there's a little less uh, of that, like just that uh, pure activism going on from the media as, as they're getting real quiet as this game is clearly failing at this juncture. And it's failing for very, very good reason. All right, leave a comment down below with what you think about this. Please hit the like and subscribe button, guys. And please also sign up for our Fandom Pulse Substack right here. We are, of course, uh, covering the things that nobody else does in uh, the industry. And we got John Trent, the best journalist in the entire industry, on with us as well. Uh, grab this in the description below. And thank you guys so much for supporting us with paid memberships. It's been amazing uh, as a start so far. And we are just getting started.